Let's reading today. Got the whole chapter here of Daniel chapter 6. We're going to talk a little bit about Daniel and the lion's den, but even more importantly, what it means. What it means. Consistent faith is the topic today. Consistent faith. So Daniel 6, verses 1 through 28. Here we go. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then as Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. They could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither were there, was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled themselves, or assembled together to the king and said, Thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God, as he did four times. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored until the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought, and he laid the mouth, and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den, so Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded that they brought those which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, down their children and their wives, 
and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces wherever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever in his kingdom that which, that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this account, this true story of what has happened. And I pray, Father, that we would understand that this isn't a child's story. This is factual. I pray, Father, that we would understand the deeper meanings behind what has happened here. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to understand. I pray, Lord, that you would give us just a few moments now of, of concentration that we could really delve into the question of cons consistent faith. Do we have it? Do we exercise it in our lives? Reveal it to us, Lord. Help us to get there. And I pray, Father, that you'd be glorified. And I pray that your Son would be magnified. It's in his precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, start with a little story here. There's, they were known as the 40 martyrs of Sebast. In the famed 12th Legion of Rome's Imperial Army, there were 40 soldiers who professed their faith in Jesus Christ. And one day their captain informed them that Emperor Licinius had sent out an edict commanding that all soldiers offer a sacrifice to their pagan gods. Well, these Christian soldiers said, you can have our armor and even our bodies, but our heart's allegiance belongs to Jesus Christ. Because of the stand that they took, they were marched onto a frozen lake in the midwinter of AD 320 and stripped of their clothing. At any time, they could renounce Christ and be spared death. Instead, they huddled close together and they sang their song of victory, 40 martyrs for Christ. And that night, 39 men fell to their icy graves. When there was only one left, he stumbled to the shore and renounced Christ. And as the officer of the guard had listened and seen what had happened, he secretly came to believe in Christ. He immediately replaced the man who had renounced Jesus and he walked out onto the ice, threw off his clothes and confessed faith in Jesus at sunrise. The Roman soldiers found 40 men who had given their all for the cause of Christ. And these 40 brave men demonstrated consistent faith. So did Daniel. So did Daniel. You know, several times, it is said by Darius here that um, Daniel prayed continually, continually, consistently. As we see Daniel face this great trial of faith, there are a few things concerning the power of consistent faith that I want to talk about this morning. See, Daniel can, teaches us about consistency here. He teaches us that it does get you where you want to go. It does have a payoff that is where you want to be. It isn't so much about the start or the finish of it. It's the in-between that's so important. Kind of like an Oreo. Nobody likes the outside. You want to get to the middle. That's where it is, right? Now, the, the start and the finish are very small events in a race, but the race itself is everything else. It's everything. It's the running of it that God is interested in faithful way that we do it. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. There is power, power in consistent faith. Consistent faith will be tested. You know, 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We know this. We've preached this a lot around here. And we understand life's not going to be easy. My wife and I were just talking about that. You know, there's a song called The Unseen Hand. And there's a line in there that goes, uh, as I go through this world of woe. You know, you think about that. You just stop there for a minute. What's he talking about? You know, we sometimes just gloss right over the lyrics of songs. And we think, wait a minute. This world of woe. That's exactly what it is. All of this pain and suffering we see around us, all the trials that we go through, without Christ, it is a world of woe. It is a horrible place. We need the sustaining power of Christ. We need His grace upon us every day. There is power there. Now, if you choose to live for Jesus, holding nothing back, giving everything to Him, yes, persecution will come. But that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I, we can smile today. That's a good thing. And even though I can't see some of your smiles, I know you're smiling. I can see it in your eyes. But Daniel accomplished so much for the Lord. You see, Daniel was already a great man. He's already a great man, but God wanted to develop him even further. You know, in verse 3 it says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. He was even thinking about just giving him the whole thing because he was so high in the king's eyes. He was so good. You know, your trials, we have to understand. And I think of Joseph when I say this too. Your trials are never meant to destroy you. They're meant to grow you and to bring you to the place where God wants you to be. Romans 8, 28, we know it well. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. See, because of Daniel's trial, God received glory and honor. And as we faithfully stand in spite of our trials in life, God is honored by our faith in him. I would contend that we are as honoring to God through what we might think is a kind of simple or mundane everyday trial as Daniel was in his you know, very flashy and amazing and written in the Bible trial. You think about that. It's just as real to you when a loved one dies. It's just as real to you when some horrible thing besets you. And yet, it's the same God who's loving you and is going to sustain you that did the same thing for Daniel. You know, whatever circumstance we might find ourselves in today, we should be glorifying God in it. That's really it. And that's, that's one of the things I have found. You know, when you glorify God in the depths of your darkness and in your trial, it not only glorifies God, but it brings you up too. When you're glorifying God, God is honored. God pours out His grace upon you. God is pleased when you're doing that thing that he's told you to do at the hardest time. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. See, verses 4 and 5, I'll read them to you one more time. Then said these men, we shall not find any, or, yeah, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and thus and said thus unto him. And then they go on to tell Darius that basically rat him out and tell him what, what's going on. Kind of reminds me of what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego too. You know, there's always the rats around. They're, they're always the guys that are going to tell on you. And they're the ones, though, that ultimately pay the price. Now, so many, so many things popping up in my head. You know, I think about aim and I think all these different things. I got to stay focused here. Now, these men did not like Daniel. They were disturbed by his faith. It was making them look bad. 
He was so excellent, according to this. He was so excellent in, in the eyes of the king. And he was even being considered to take the reins of the whole thing. And the king was probably going to sit back and just take his ease and watch. And they knew it. The people there, the, these princes, and they, they, they did not like Daniel at all. Did that ever happen to you, by the way? Did that ever happen to you at work? Like, you do a really good job, because I, I assume, don't you all do a very good job at your work? And people sometimes that don't do a good job are looking at you and they're casting a bit of dispersion, maybe saying a little something behind your back, or trying to make you look bad so they can kind of bring them up. Well, this is it in spades. This is it. Absolutely, these guys are upset, and they just want, this, they want Daniel gone. And so, as the world watches us, and we walk through our own lion's dens, they can see faith at work. And I'll tell you what, when you're living for the Lord and they see that faith, it truly touches their hearts. They don't understand why we can be happy in a trial. When Bobby showed up here with his bicycle a couple weeks ago, he couldn't understand why we would just help him with no price tag why we would just be friendly to him with no strings attached. That's God. If the world doesn't understand, but that's God. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And isn't that what it's all about? Glorifying God. You know, when we glorify God, we don't have to worry about us. When we're glorifying God, God is happy with us. And when we do that, the blessings, just watch them come. He will help you through anything. He will give you what you need, and most of the time, much more. You know, you see, we're, we are a living epistle we're before man. You know, 2 Corinthians 3.10 says that. We are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Don't think for a minute. The world doesn't see it. Don't think that they don't see your peace in, in hard times. I know there are people at my work that are very disturbed about this whole COVID thing. And it, and it takes concern, yes. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I know my Lord's in under control, got it all under control. I know things are going to work out in His way. And so I don't sweat it. Even under my mask in that kitchen, sweating physically, I don't sweat it spiritually. I let it go because it's not my concern. That's God's concern. We've prayed about it, and we can leave it there. And that's that's what the world doesn't get. They don't. They see your peace, and they want you to be agitated. They see your actions, and they don't understand why you're not jumping up and down and swearing and pulling your hair out. But I don't have to. I don't have to. And by the way, it doesn't do any good anyway. It just makes you more angry. But we will receive our help from the Lord. You know, consistent faith will also testify. You know, sometimes the testimony of our faith un under trial is louder than our words. Sometimes I can, I can talk about faith all day long, but if I act on my faith and people see that, that's much more powerful. This is just kind of telling you how to do it, but then there's the doing of it in life. And that's what's really important. Uh, I'm going to read verses 10 and 11 to you from our text again. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. You know, in the, in the scripture that Arnold read in Psalm 55 today, Spoke of David praying three times to the Lord. Consistent faith. Every day praying to the Lord. It's not a bad thing to set times to pray, as long as it's not mechanical. You know, it's, it's a good thing to have something set where you're always going to do it. It's, it's, it's good and it's practical and helpful for you. Um, you see, Daniel did not change what he did even to make the king happy, even to appease the princes and the presidents and to make that law 
have power over him. He didn't do that. He was consistent in spite of the danger. And by the way, he opened the windows just like he always did. He let people see him. He was not ashamed of his God. He was going to do it. And the pressure to conform was there, even at the command of the king, and yet he did not conform because God had precedence in his life. And when you stand for God, you can rest assured he will stand for you. Think of Stephen standing or being stoned and Jesus standing for him at the right side of the Father. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. It testifies not only to your foes, it testifies to your friends too. Daniel's faith made an impact on Darius, didn't it? He didn't want this to happen. He saw that he had been kind of um, bamboozled into it. There's an old word for you. He, he, was, he was kind of put into a corner and he couldn't get out. And he was mad at these guys. I'm sure of it. This sore displeased him. You know, that, that's, that's like, when, you, when something sore displeases you in the Bible, that's heavy stuff. That means, ooh, yeah, yeah, he's upset. Now, he wasn't upset at Daniel. He was upset at himself, probably, and upset at these princes and presidents. And even he believed that Daniel could get through this trial because his Lord was powerful enough. When faith is exercised consistently, the power of it can move people to consider the Lord for themselves. Now, Daniel stayed, of course, knowing that his, the only one in his life that he had to please was God. It wasn't Darius. It wasn't princes, it wasn't the presidents, it wasn't anyone else. And when we faithfully walk with the Lord, in spite of the problems and temptations that surround us, we make a statement about where our focus truly is. We're not trying to please everybody. We don't have to. We don't want to. We're just trying to please God. And our, problem, our primary concern, our primary goal is the glory of God. Again, 1 Corinthians 10.31. Where, where, whether, therefore, you eat or drink, and whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Because in the end, our consistent faith will be triumphant faith. Daniel's faith gave him the victory, and your faith will do the same for you. I have three verses here I'm going to read for you very quickly. 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith is where it's at when you want to overcome. Faith is the victory. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then 2 Corinthians 2, 14, Now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Always. Always. And maketh manifest savor his knowledge by us in every place. See, Daniel's faith in God allowed him to enjoy sweet victory over the lion's den from the dangers that he had, from the darkness, from King Darius, from his detractors, and even over himself, he had victory. His faith carried him through the trial, and Daniel learned this, that every single saint of God can learn this same thing. God will either get you out of your trial, or he'll give you grace in your trial. And what he doesn't take away, he makes a way to take. See, faith can still part your sea. Faith can still fill your barrel. Faith can still give you those loaves and fishes. It can multiply them. It can make you walk on your storm. Faith still is a guarantee of victory to the child of God. All things are possible to him that believeth. And ultimately, it gives you triumph over your adversary. David's faith, or sorry, David, Daniel's faith enabled him to see the lions lose their appetite. They just were there around him. I saw a video the other day where 
some guy was up fishing in Alaska, and um, a bear came and sat next to him. Big old brown bear. Walked up. He didn't seem to, uh, uh, you know, this bear's every breathes real heavy and walks right up. He's a big bear. He's sitting there in a folding chair with a fishing pole, and there was an empty chair between him and the bear. And he's sitting there video with this bear. And this bear comes up and stands there, uh, uh, and then he sits. And I'm thinking, at any moment, that bear just might get an urge to be a little bit hungry and eat that guy. You know, he could do it. But it reminded me of what the lions must have been like. And I think they were a lot hungrier, and there were a lot more of them around Daniel. But there sat that bear. And then he got up, and he walked away. And I thought, the guy must have, first off, the guy with their video on it must have nerves of steel. Either that or a really big gun. But whatever the case, <laughs> he was sitting there video with that bear, and then the bear moved on. But I think about it, the fear that most people would have. If you don't have the Lord, or you don't have some other thing that's helping you, like a big gun or a you know, lever you can pull and the bear pulls in it. You know, if you don't have something like that in your back pocket, that's a scary situation, one bear. And I'm thinking, a den of lions. There's no way out. There's nowhere to run. And they're all starving. And you are what they like to eat. And so it's all against him. So it's all, it's all the power of God. You see, he saw, Daniel saw, every adversary, to include the lions, defeated. And one day the saints of God will see all of the enemies of the faith fall too. Do you know what's funny? I don't really look forward to that. I wish they didn't have to go that way. I wish that people would get saved. But we know they won't. But we'll see it happen. We'll see them fall. That's why we should have a burden for them now. That's why we should be reaching out to any who will come. I um, was talking to Janine the other night on the phone, and um, you know we did a little thing a while back, just about a week or so back now, where she was asking the question, um, how do you communicate with God? And it was pretty fascinating. I did a little bit of a study for her and sent it off, and she did that with several friends and relatives. We sent it back, and we chatted about that. and. Um, She's really you know, making some good points. And then we were talking about our own walk and our own faith. And I realized she was sad. She was depressed. She, she'd been stuck in the same place for a long time. And no prospect of really getting out of California anytime soon. Though Southern California, where she is, Long Beach, is not too bad a place to be stuck. Uh, and she's got a good place to live and everything, but still, she's lonely. She's lonely for people that really care about her and love her. And I thought, and I, and I shared with her, that she knows this too, but sometimes we all need reminders, that God is there for you. He is always there for you, even when you're in that den of lions. I'm studying this message out there. We kind of really related that a little bit to Daniel's situation. But he felt so alone, in danger, God gave him the grace and the peace and the knowledge of, of understanding that he was not going to be harmed. He was going to be okay through this darkest of situations. You know. Consistency is what we need. Consistency is what we need if we want to have a, a working testimony, a real practical life. I think that's really what I'm trying to say. You know, I think about my kids, you know, when, when they were babies, we used to read the Bible to them, as I mentioned in Sunday school. We used to read the Bible to them all the time. We used to try and live a Christian life in front of them. And we used to try and deal with things in a Christian way, so that we could be an example to them. And man, did we make mistakes, like everybody does. But in the mistakes, you could even 
do it the Christian way, and you could ask forgiveness, and you could get over it and move on. And you know, it's practical, it's visible, it's day-to-day -day consistency in the Christian life. And that's really what we need today. It bolsters our faith. And as you see your prayers being answered, those ones you know that you consistently pray, those ones for that loved one that just doesn't seem to get saved, those ones that you just pray for that one that's ill and is not getting better, those prayers are heard. And when you're consistently after the Lord to answer those prayers, He will answer those prayers. He wants your consistency. You know, I saw, we saw each of our five children come to know the Lord, as I mentioned before, at a fairly early age, one of them very early age. But I believe that consistency had a great deal to do with that. Believe me, consistency is tough for this guy. I, I, I just kind of like doing my own thing, naturally. I like to go out and do what I feel like doing. So consistency for me deals with humility and surrender as well. I must surrender myself to the Lord. I must humble myself to God so that I can be consistent and just not go do my spur of the moment thing. The reason most people don't practice consistency is because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. Uh, one more little analogy, and I think we'll close it out. But um, I think about consistency. Any of you that, um, like Arnold, for instance, anybody that ever hangs around me at my house or anything, know that I like stock car racing. Not, not the big NASCAR stuff. I like dirt track stock cars. I think they're pretty cool. And, you know, growing up, I used to go to the races all the time with my brother and my family. And, you know, we'd make a Saturday night of it most weeks. And um, I watched some of these, these, these vlogs about it. And I watched things on, on YouTube. But they do this thing. They, uh, they, they, when they do a, a feature race at the end of the night, they get points for it. The winner gets X number of points, the second place guy gets a few less, and on down the line you get the picture. And at the end of the season, the person who accumulates the most points is the points champion. And so, what it takes is not necessarily winning every race, but kind of being up there in the top five, or top six or seven, consistently. Consistently. And that's how the points champion gets there. Consistency pays off for that person. Consistency pays off for us, but we frequently neglect it because the dividends come in a little bit slower than we want them to. However, whether it's finances or a meaningful relationship or even a closer walk with God and spiritual maturity, consistency is the best way to get there. So the question is, very simple one today, are you a consistent Christian? And do you live every day to the glory of God? Because God just wants people to be that way. He wants us to be consistent, and he just wants us to be obedient to him. Minute by minute, day by day. And is that us? Is that me today? If not, we know where to go. We know that we can go to him for the help that we need. And if you're up and down, and you're just blowing with the winds of change, and in and out, and all over the place, you don't have to. You can get off the roller coaster. You can walk for him and be consistent. And he'll, he'll enable you to do it. He just enabled Daniel right before our eyes. We saw it and we understand it to be true. And he wants to demonstrate that same power and truth in your consistent life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you now, Lord, for the example of Daniel. I want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, the way that you keep your word every single time, every time that it's seen in the Bible, every time that it's seen in our lives, you're there to fulfill your truths. Help us, Lord, to be consistent. I pray, Father, if there's someone here that isn't and that wants to be consistent, I pray they bring that to you. I pray they'd ask for your help and that you would show them how to be stable and consistent day to day for you. And Father, if not for themselves, for the children, 
I pray, Lord, that they would lead consistent lives before them, that we all would, so that they might be able to grow with the knowledge of what it is to be a consistent Christian as an example to them, and that they might take the torch, Lord, and, and go on for you. And Lord, if there's someone here who needs Jesus today, I pray that they would come. Whatever the need, Lord, I pray that during our time of invitation, you would work in hearts and help, Lord, with each decision. In Jesus' precious name we pray.